Okay, welcome back everybody. We are back on the clay, which means we're doing a complete from scratch lure build. So what I want to do is make like a big jerk bait. So we've all seen all the styles of saw plastic jerk baits. Uh, the most common style probably being a fluke bait. Um, so this is going to kind of be a fork tail jerk bait. Um, so we're just going to kind of start with that sort of shape. So I have just this kind of cylinder of clay here. And uh, actually, I need to get this a little more malleable. Soften it up here. That way we can shape it appropriately. So I want to um, kind of get it, get it kind of shaped. So I basically need to build it, um, not necessarily upside down, but I need the top of it flat so that we can pour it. So technically, you know, I need I need one side to be flat. Um, but let's we're gonna. But before we do that, we're just gonna kind of get sort of a a, a basic shape going. Um, I probably have more clay than I need, but we're just gonna kind of. Um, <clears throat> shape it uh, best we can here, kind of form a, a nose, so to speak, and taper it down to a tail. I have this big eight inch bait here, just kind of for size reference. Um, so I figure this one will be hopefully around seven inches or, or so. But um, yeah, so we're gonna kind of build it from the bottom up. So this will be, um, uh, this will be the the top of the bait um, so again just trying to get a very very basic shape here and um, and then our tail is actually I need to kind of put this back together bear with me folks I've never made one of these and we're trying to like figure it out as I go that way you guys are kind of seeing the actual process here there there have been no shortcuts taken ahead of time so i'm just kind of looking at the head of it here so the back the head's going to kind of face down a little bit and then the back is going to remain straight so as it's laying flat that will kind of taper up slightly um so anyway we're just got a long ways to go here but here's our tail portion Again, and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of take this tail portion and I'm gonna flatten out a, a big part of it here that I'm later going to just cut the fork tail with instead of trying to just completely shape it with my fingers. Um, so we'll get there eventually, but um, I'm gonna kind of keep working on the body a bit here. Um, and hopefully here in a few minutes, we'll kind of have a shape that looks a little bit more like what we're going for. Again, this is still a very, very rough draft. Okay, so just a quick update. We still haven't kind of cut out the tail, but we've been getting our kind of basic shape, um, fine-tuned just a, a little bit here so we're gonna kind of make a few cuts just a few small cuts here to try and just even some even some surfaces so that's kind of a, a side profile of our jerk bait so far and I'm sure we'll kind of refine it, but as you can see, it's it's relatively thin, you know, if you compare it to this monster here. Um, and then, of course, we will have a um, belly hook slot um, for rigging your hook. So we would, again, just kind of like the swim bait that we did a long time ago, 
we're just going to cut a big, thin hook slot here in the belly. And uh, try and get that out. It'll, it doesn't come out as easy as you want. And you have to do some repairing. Oh, come on. All right, so we have a little bit more done here. So now we're going to sort of try to cut out our fork tail. It's going to be a rather large fork tail. Okay. Hopefully this works. Again, I have no, oops, idea how this will look or if I can even really make something like this out of clay without it just tearing up here in this tail, but we might can pull it off. Okay. Yeah, so there's sort of our, and then we'll kind of shape it a little more. Oops. Okay, now we're just going to kind of cut a few little eyeball indentions here. These will be about six millimeter eyes. So you can put, and eh, we'll make them a little bigger. We'll make it to where you could probably squeeze like an eight or a ten in there. All right, that's looking good. And now for the other side, kind of do the same thing. Just kind of run this thing in a circle till it's big enough. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so we have our um, eyeballs there. Again, just kind of flattening it out or thinning it out. So I don't want it to be too, too, too thick. But, you know, it's it's a pretty big bait. And, uh, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely going to uh, have a big presence in the water. But I need to do more tapering here because that's not going to have enough wiggle. So, definitely going to have to take some bulk off of the tail. And uh, just kind of keep, keep shaping uh, until I have something that I really like. All right, so here's what we have right now. Um, I may have to stop for the night um, to do a few family things, but uh, you know, this isn't bad. I'm not wild about the side profile. I don't know if I need to curve this, but then that's just like every other fluke in the world, or what I can do to maybe make it different. I might, you know, add some, you know, like fin detail to the side or something. I'm not really sure yet what I'm going to do, um, but uh, we'll definitely figure something out. But that's, that's our rough draft right now. All right, everybody. So uh, I did a few more things off camera, just shaping wise, and then I went ahead and fired it in the oven. Um, I had to do a couple, uh, couple things around the house, family chores, things like that. Um, Julie wasn't feeling good tonight, so I had, uh, I had, um, to get land into bed and all that, but we're, um, back here and we're starting our sanding process, so I think we'll, uh, be able to do some really good shaping here. I like my little simple fins there, that's about as simplistic as you can get, but I figured what the heck, you know. I'll, you know, kind of dab some uh, pigment or mica powder in there and kind of jazz that up a little bit on some of them just to bring that out. Who knows? May look good, may not. Okay, so we're making some good progress here. You don't see hardly any finger indentions or fingerprints. There's definitely some left in the in the tail. Some of the more uh, sensitive parts of the bait down here. I can't really sand those as firmly. You know, I have to take it real easy. 
because you will break this and I will be pissed. <clears throat> but hopefully that won't happen. Knock on wood, but I haven't broken a master yet before pouring the mold. So we're hoping to extend that winning streak. And uh, I have like a little piece of cardboard that I'm putting inside my hook slot so that when I'm sanding the edges, I'm not pushing it into open space, which might cause the thin wall there to break. Um, <clears throat> so again, just trying to smooth things as much as possible. All right, so now we're actually out in the garage and we're just going to give it a light polyurethane coat. Just gonna brush it on, just like the last video. Just gonna brush it on over uh, pretty much everything but the back. We don't really need it on the back. Because the back is gonna be the open part of the plastic that's not actually gonna touch silicone necessarily, if that makes any sense. So again, just a light little coat of some quick polyurethane. Okay, everybody, we're gonna lower the camera a little bit here, but we have our box made, um, our Lego box, <clears throat> and we have the bait glued down, and we are ready to mix up some silicone here and give this bad baby a pour. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Nothing like trying to mix this crap by hand, huh? But this is a completely handmade bait in handmade mold. No 3D printing or computer software or, or anything like that. We didn't even sketch and scan an uh, image. Uh, nope, just kind of did it from scratch and hopefully that's good enough. Who knows? Some of those other processes are much better. But I'm kind of like one of my buddies, Brad. We just like to make things with our hands. Uh, Marling Bates, of course, the king of making something awesome with his hands. So yeah, anyway, we're going to keep mixing this up and then it's uh, almost time to pour the mold. Okay, everybody, here we go. Just gonna kinda, it's hard to pour this stuff slowly out of this cup. I might need to start using a cup that has like a, that's uh, skinnier so that it doesn't pour as much out over such a wide area. <clears throat> But, you know, I want to try and pour this slow so that it really fills in that hook slot properly. So we don't want to trap air and then get a bad hook slot fill, so to speak. Nice and slow, y'all. All righty. Looks like it's filling in there. And there'll be some air bubbles come up. That's normal. Yeah, that heat gun will kind of pop some air bubbles and, and bring some more air out. Especially when I hit it good <clears throat> around the uh, hook slot there. Yeah, you can see how it kind of brings out some air bubbles. All right, everybody, so we have the mold here. So we're going to um, leave it for the rest of the day until tomorrow. Um, so I don't think I'll have time, e even if it cures before I go to bed tonight or sets up, um, I don't think I'll have time to mess with it tonight. So let's plan on meeting back tomorrow. W what we're going to do is we're going to pour, um, a couple of baits with it. And, uh, and then I have to go to band practice tomorrow night, but on the way to band practice, 
um, there's a pond that has pretty clear water so I think I can get a couple of good shots of it in the water um, I mean there's always a chance of catching one on it this pond is like a, a hotel pond and they put some like chemical in the water to make it clear it's full of small fish but um, I, don't, I, I guess there could be a big one in there somewhere but the the kicker uh, well not the kicker but the important thing is I'll get some good shots of the bait in action so with that said we will see you guys tomorrow and uh, thanks for hanging in there probably gonna be a pretty long video okay so we're gonna pour sort of a pink pearlish base color um, so there's a little bit of white pearl <clears throat> all right we'll go ahead and stir that in just a just enough to give it some pearl yeah looking good and then we're going to also um, do like literally like a drop or two of pink um, because I don't want too much and this stuff's pretty thick so there we go there's our drop yeah isn't that nice okay Looking good, looking good. I think one drop will do the trick, just like uh, hot sauce, right? One drop does it. A little bit of medium black flake. Okay, so that's 0 .035. And just a little bit to go around. Then we're actually gonna add some new flake that I got. This is big square cut hologram. So we're gonna add a few pieces of this big stuff there. Alrighty. Now let's mix up and see what we get. See if we need to make any changes, perhaps. Ah, you know, that's actually pretty cool. All right, I think we're gonna go with that. Yeah, so here we go. Gonna get our uh, glove on real quick. <clears throat> okay. And it's time to pour the bait. This is an interesting color. Go ahead and get this tail filled in here. Yeah, I filled it in a little much, but that's kind of to be expected. All right. Okay, we're gonna let that sit and see what we get. All right, quick drum roll. Let's see if we can get this thing out in one piece. Okay. Tail comes out pretty easy, but don't want to rip this body in half. Okay, just get it in the bath for a second. Hey, hey, pretty cool. And yeah, we're gonna embellish it quite a bit more, but it's a nice shiny bait. It's not dull, and uh, that's what I wanted. So I'm really happy with that and then we're going to uh, hopefully make this thing look pretty cool by the time we're done okay so we're gonna do a little bit of powder painting so I'm just gonna get some black mica powder here and we're just gonna kind of give this thing sort of a top layer and it, and it more or less looks silver it's not the darkest so normally I would just cut it with um, actual black pigment but we're just gonna go with it as it is and uh, try not to make a mess but we're just gonna kinda give the bait a little bit of life here using some powders okay just gonna do like a top layer with this black silver here and then we're gonna kinda transition that into a green so I have a couple different greens, but the chartreuse green pearl is, is sort of my favorite. I absolutely love the way that this stuff looks here. And the cool thing about powders is that you don't really have to be all that precise. And in most cases, you, you kind of can't be. It, it kind of gets everywhere. Uh, well, I actually do have a fan going, which probably is helping to blow it where I don't really want it. But kind of the whole point of doing this, you know, it's kind of like using a Luma Dust. It's a, 
just kind of a random effect. You don't really get straight lines with it, which is fine considering that there are no straight lines in nature. So you're definitely not going to get a fake, uh, perfect look with doing this stuff. And then we're going to get finish up the bottom with some gold. And all of a sudden you have a completely transformed bait. It doesn't look anything like it originally did. And uh and and it's and it's pretty easy to do. So we're going to do this other side. So yeah. There we go. That's kind of what we have. And uh we're going to set that aside cuz we have another one to do. Okay, and last but not least, we're just gonna dab kind of a few small black dots on this thing. Just kind of at random. Just with some uh, black pigment here. Just to give them a what the heck am I looking at kind of feel. pigment there you can see my uh, little uh, fin there <laughs> my attempt at a fin okay moment of truth we're gonna dip these real quick and I mean like real quick all right try not to get that pigment running which so far so good that's some nice uh, ugly dip huh that's the thing about clear dip, it doesn't actually have to be clear. But, the clearer, definitely, I think it does make them shine up a bit. But that's just a bunch of old worm remelt that uh, I just haven't added color to. And I keep using it for clear dip. And as long as it keeps working, I'm gonna keep using it. So, anyway, yeah. That's a cool looking bait, y'all. I mean, check it out. That is pretty spiffy. Okay, everybody, let's take a look. Hey, hey that's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and trim off our uh, noses here. Boom, done baits. And the clear dip um, went all the way through the hook slots, so it didn't gum up the slot. And um, it's important that you're using um, a thin uh, plastic or a uh, soft plastic to do your dipping because it'll be thinner, it'll have a thinner coat and it will get in those crevices. If I was using um, the same blend as the bait, it wouldn't run near as thin and chances are it would have gummed up these hook slots. So, pretty neat, y'all. What do you think? A really, really, really cool bait. And, um, yeah, so... I kind of filmed this video backwards. Well, not necessarily backwards, but um, <clears throat> I've actually, these are not the first baits that I've made uh, with this mold. I poured a chartreuse version of it earlier so that I could run down to the pond before it got dark to get, uh, to get this thing in the water to get a look at the action. So we're gonna cut to that right now. Okay, everybody, <clears throat> we are at the pond. This is not the pond that I was talking about band practice got canceled so I'm at a different pond but we're gonna toss this out here and just kind of oh yeah hold on let me try to get it get in the water some more here oh yeah bounces around pretty good toss it over there Yeah. I went ahead and poured this chartreuse bait um, before I actually made the baits that I'm going to feature in the video because I was running out of daylight. So I just took some uh, chartreuse remelt and uh, just poured a quick bait. So this is technically the first bait with the mold and uh, ran down to the pond as quick as I could. Uh oh, I'm getting an amber alert. 
So anyway, now we'll uh, toss it on out there a little further. It weighs a pretty good amount, so it, oh yeah, that does exactly what I wanted it to do. You can just kind of walk the dog with it. It's darting back and forth. You can put this on a big jig head and jig it real deep, which hopefully I'll be doing Saturday. I'm going fishing Saturday. Wish me luck, everybody. Yeah, look at that. I like it. It's a success. I hope this is coming through on camera, some of the action of the bait here. But uh, I like it quite a bit. Awesome, awesome. This is like a uh, eight aught weightless swim bait hook, or, or maybe it's a six. It might be a size six, but uh, it can definitely fit a much larger hook if you want. Okay, guys, there it is. There's our big Mondo jerk bait. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, if you have a cool name idea, shoot it to me. I'd, I'd love to hear uh, what, what you guys can come up with. But um, yeah, a really cool bait, a big bait. Um, yeah, I've always wanted a supersized kind of jerk bait, and uh, now I have one. So I think it's really, really, really cool. Please, comments down below. Let me know what you think. Chris, those are great. Chris, those really suck. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll catch you next time.